Well, we look on, verse 38. Then Saul clothed David with his garments, put a bronze helmet on his head, and he clothed him with armor. And David girded his sword over his armor, tried to walk, for he had not tested them. So David said to Saul, I can't go with these, for I've not tested them. And David took them off. Interesting part of the story here, and I think this is a credible moment, incredibly significant moment, because what Saul is tempting David to do at this moment is to compromise in the area of faith in God alone. He's saying, David, that's great, you trust God, that's really cool, but you probably ought to put some armor on too. Trust in God, but also carry my sword. Trust in God, but make sure you've got this helmet on your head to protect you. The, the, the greatest obstacle that David faced in this narrative to me is not Goliath, but it was the temptation to compromise in the area of faith in God alone. Because if David takes the armor, you say, well, what, what, matter would, how, what would it matter? I mean, if he wins, he wins. It's still David and Goliath. Listen, if David wears the armor and he defeats Goliath, then who can it take at least some of the credit? Saul. Saul could say, well, I was generous and, uh, and uh, he won because he took my armor and yeah, you know, I get some of the credit for participating in this. But God's gonna work it in such a way that there's only one person who will get the credit. There's only one person who will get the glory, God alone. Listen to me. In our salvation, God has worked it in such a way that there's only one person who gets the credit, and that's God alone, by grace alone, in faith in Christ alone. Isn't that awesome? Um, none of us are gonna get to heaven someday and say, boy, look at what I did. It's not faith in anything other than Jesus Christ and him alone. 